Welcome to the Ecosystem Show. We're thrilled to have you with us. Here we challenge traditional mindsets and explore innovative approaches to maximizing the value of your software estate. We don't expect you to agree with everything. Challenge us, share your thoughts, and let's grow together. Now, let's dive in. It's showtime. Well, welcome back to the Ecosystem Show. It's another you week. Can't even, it's a, it's a, it's you can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> See, <laughs> that, that's it, right? We, we we have this like little silence before we get started, and everyone's waiting in anticipation. What's next? Well, welcome back for those of you that are the loyal one with listener that we do have, uh, or watcher of the show. Um, and that would be you, Nathan. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. <laughs> By the way, that word appreciate you, has that become such a big word out of America lately? What? Oh, I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate this. Oh, I appreciate you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it grinds my gears. It's meant to be a more sincere way of saying thank you. Yeah. Well, let's just say thank you. It's I appreciate you. Well, but yeah. if you use more syllables, it seems more sincere because you put more effort into it wow oh. it's just become such a cliche at the moment like particularly I what i notice it more. in and on, i'm a bit embarrassed to say this but love at first sight <laughs> what is that <laughs> i still don't understand what this show is U uk edition this here is the trashy uh yeah. the trashy dating show episode of the ecosystem show i will not watch this junk when they say this to each other, I appreciate you, but I'm out like, are you serious? Like, yuck. You have no idea how often I'm going to tell you about my appreciation for you, Mark, now, regularly. I appreciate you. Classic. So we're recording this one week out from all getting on planes, trains, and automobiles and flying our way to the lights of Las Vegas, where we will... Spend lots of money in the casino. Mm -hmm. We'll entertain. We'll learn about the power platform. We'll probably have a quiet dinner with Charles Lamana. <laughs> Speak for yourself, pal. <laughs> what won't be quiet? Is that what you're saying? No, no quiet. Yeah, that's dinner. pretty much it. Yeah, it's never yeah. quiet. Have you ever spent? Have you ever been somewhere like where? In public with Charles Lamana, where there's people from Microsoft land walking past, right? You you can't get 30 seconds into a conversation without someone just just mobbing him for a selfie. Yeah. 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 Poor guy. Yeah. Poor yeah. Guy. Honestly, I feel sorry for somebody in that position in that – because, like, you see him take – he he uses what I call the standard fig leaf pose. Have you heard of the fig leaf pose for no. for photos or – the fig leaf pose is where you put both hands together and you cover your balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the fig leaf pose. And it's like, so, it's one of those things like if you haven't been um, taught about how, you know, in photography and stuff, they teach you, you know, if you're going to pose for something, if it's bendable, you should bend it. Have you heard that term? Yes, actually I have. So in other words, the elbow bends, bend it a bit in the pose, bend your, like let your knee move a bit, like, yeah, <laughs> not, not the T-Rex. <laughs> But because it, it brings it brings kind of gravitas to your your photo, you know, your selfie or whatever it is, it's going to be. Can we have a rule? Can we have a rule when we are in Vegas, since all four of us will be there? That <laughs> if if one of us sees someone else with their hands kind of folded behind their back, yeah, that is yeah. the sign for I need help. Please yeah. come help me yeah. with this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if anybody. If, if if I'm talking with anyone at Vegas who sees me do that and you recognize it from the show, I will buy you a drink. <laughs> can, I, can I one be – have you ever seen the show Talladega Nights? The first five. The first five. Yeah. Have you ever seen the show Talladega Nights, the movie? No. no. I mean, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah, but he doesn't yeah. know what to do with his hands. He's just like this. <laughs> Please, can you just do your whole talk like this? <laughs> just... It's funny that you say that because have any of you seen Emily in Paris? No. Her boss, whenever she walks, she always walks with her hands kind of I'm like, and she's an older lady, but it always, yeah, it's weird. That's so funny. Is that, and, and I don't know if we have Anna back yet, but that might be, Emily in Paris might be the show that our two and a half year old is weirdly into because I guess Emily or one of the main characters looks like her aunt 
uh, her aunt Diana. She's from Chicago, Emily. Yeah, and, and like she's an American in Paris, and it's a really good mate. It's a brilliant, it's brilliant. Anyhow, let's get underway because we're well underway already, and are we those are. coming to listen to the technical prowess of the 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 people on the show are not getting any tin technical. They're just getting dump, 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 dump. chin wagging shit. <laughs> one of the things, one of the things, as 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 we warm up, I'll I'll bring to the table. A couple of weeks ago, a gentleman in Microsoft by the name of do you remember his name? Steve Jeffrey. Steve, Steve Jeffrey. He released a, or he published on August the 20th, 2024. We're going to let Anna back in. He published a document called the Introduction to the Business Value Toolkit. And it's obviously another kit that's coming out of the CAT team. What struck me on this is that it really allows the measurement of the impact of the power platform inside an organization yep. down to the apps, the automations, et cetera. So in other words, rather than, you know, yesterday was published the Forrester total economic impact report for 2024 on the power platform, which has some numbers that totally blow away the past um, reports in the space. And um, over 200% ROI within six months, like some crazy numbers, right? Um, being delivered. And, and then this, what I love about this toolkit is that this applies to your own environment, your own, your own environments, your own tenants, so that you can really understand the impact. Because what I've noticed, particularly in larger implementations, when internally they go to senior leadership for budget to do more in the following years of using the platform, they often don't have the 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 folks don't have evidence of the impact that they're creating inside the organization like what is what's the financial impact of these solutions we've deployed what's the you know what's the you know what is the is, is it a cost reduction is it a profit increase um did we avoid getting litigated against you know if it was a compliance related thing they've got no tooling to actually structure something that could be presented to the executive that says, hey, isn't this amazing what we've achieved in the last 12 months? Give us some more budget to do more for this great stuff. This is something that that I feel like we've been, we, the big, you know, the big community and, and industry has been struggling with for a long time. And it's not limited to power platform. Um, I, I think we should get into later on in the conversation what the application of this is for AI workloads or for, um, you know, data products, um, an investment in a data platform, et cetera, and, and how and how it transfers. But I think this one of the big challenges that that I've had over the years, right, is that I'm a technologist, right? I'm an mm. architect. I am not an organizational economist. I'm not an accountant. <laughs> I'm not. I have no personal specialty or expertise in business value assessment. And, um, you know, so I think that, that a lot of, and this is of course true across the industry. So there's a lot of people, a lot of organizations that have really failed to pick quantitative dollars and cents, pounds and pennies, euros, and whatever hundredths of a euro are called mm -hmm. cents, I guess. Anyway, have failed to make these arguments because one, many people lack the expertise and there hasn't been a good tool. I mean, there's been this tool called shark finesse that, um, you know, those of us who have been in this for a while, you know, yeah. know, and, and, and have used, but shark finesse is not the most approachable thing oh. for a novice over the top. Right. It isn't extreme. So extreme that people just stop using it because it was too, too cumbersome in, in what it was doing. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I get, I get the tooling, but like, man, my pea brain doesn't deal with, deal with that type of stuff. I think, I think, so I, I get this all the time, right? Like when we talk to organizations about what is the ROI, what is the value? Yeah. Like I, I struggle with this a lot and it's mainly because when organizations adopted tools like Microsoft Office, mm -hmm. they didn't ROI every email they sent or every Excel they made. They didn't go, what's the ROI on this spreadsheet that I'm going to make? They just naturally assume that, well, it's part of business productivity, so this is something we should do, right? And when email came out, they didn't go, what is the ROI of me sending this email to any of you? It wasn't a thing. It was just considered yeah. business productivity. Yeah. And then 
I, yeah. I like I get why you need why you need to do ROI against things, but the problem that I have is that when you look at the tools like Steve has got, and I think it's a good tool, by the way. I think it's a good tool. I've seen it in action. I know how it works. I understand mm-hmm. what he's done. I feel like this is going to be overkill, and I'll tell you why. Because every organization that's got any – every CFO that's got anything to do with a implementation of a platform is going to say, what is the ROI on every app or flow that you make? And you can't do that. It no. doesn't work. Like, I get Anchor apps. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, for sure. But I don't. I think that when I think that when organizations get overcarried away with ROI, it becomes more of an inhibitor than anything else, and that's what I found. Yeah, but but I I think you're arrogant, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that because I refuse to sell any power platform solutions that haven't gone? <laughs> sorry, any AI solutions that haven't gone through a governance board? I heard I heard that was a thing as well. Classic, man. Classic. No, what I was going to say is that, you know, for me, in a tool like this, I'd be squarely, squarely in a team, not squealing. I would be going to the my PM. My PM, just as part of the delivery process or, or whoever the program yeah. manager is, this is a tool that you need to own and deliver the outputs back to the executive. Yeah. It's just a, it's just part of doing the job type thing. Yeah. It's not a, a one-time point thing that we do. I think that tooling like that is um, is very useful because oftentimes our job is to actually help the CTO or the CI or the CEO to show value. And yeah. they haven't got time to listen to us go on about technology and AI and, AI and about waves of, of adoption and enhancements and stuff like that. What they want to do is be able to have a one pager that says we are better than anyone else mm. because we use this technology and the result is this much ROI. The end. That that's all they want. And so having a tool for that is brilliant because for for now we're making it up, right? Let's take a quick break. Are you ready to transform your career in just 90 days? Join me on the 90-Day Mentoring Challenge and unlock your full potential. As a listen to the podcast, enroll now and get 10% off using the code MBAP. That's MBAP at the checkout. Don't miss this opportunity to learn from industry leaders and accelerate your growth. Visit ako.nz365guy.com and start your journey today. Yeah, I just see it allows for store good storytelling, right? Mm-hmm. I just watched recently Lumen Technologies in the US. They have done a big AI piece inside the organization. It's probably one of my, Microsoft's hero case studies right now around Copilot um, implemented. And they've got some amazing stats that have come out, and the stats tell a great story, right? Four hours saved per sales agent. That's a right. $54,000 per person per right. annum cost mm-hmm. saving it's just like data points like that you know they they ran a hackathon and um say 4000 hours yeah. um from some of the ideas that came out it's like those dot points the business goes whoa this is amazing like let's do more and it's just really giving the kind of gravitas to let's keep doing more of this because these are exciting stories that have been told and a tool like this potentially gives you those numbers it doesn't matter whether you are a developer or a project manager or um you want you are the team lead or 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 the practice lead or it doesn't matter who you are having these sort of tools and being able to articulate what the results of your work is are um will propel your career and that's that's very yeah. important right if we are to live in a in, in an era of um even human connection, if if you will, and if you want to progress and learn new skills, which we must do, we need to have, this is one of the prerequisites, I think. Nice. Yeah, it it is, but okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to agree, but I'm going to come back with detail. How many organizations do you know you can go to and say, can you define the concepts of value? Yeah, because This tool requires you to put in value concepts as like line items, okay? 
And it's the same thing. Okay, my, my favorite one is this. I had a conversation with somebody recently. We were talking about the criticality of a solution. So I said, cool, cool, cool. Define criticality. Like what does what does critical mean to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you know, if if it creates downtime in the office, I'm like, yeah, but you can still do it manually, right? Like you can still do the thing manually. So like think about the concept of criticality and what does that mean? Now switch that over to value. Like what does value mean to you? And if you go to the CFO, value is crap loads of money saved. If you go to the CEO, retaining people and, and creating time. And then, so you have to basically build out value concepts. And that's why this tool is cool, but it is an end product to a much bigger play here. And that play is defining the whole ecosystem before you put things into a key, into a, into a bunch of boxes. I've, I've been thinking about this um, and then I'll use a, an example from outside of tech, but one of the things that I worry about um, is that our society has lost, I think in a lot of ways, the ability to make judgments as to the goodness or the badness or the usefulness or the non-usefulness or the, you know, we've lost a lot of our ability or maybe a lot of our confidence in making judgments about things. If we don't have some sort of study or some sort of um, data to, to prove it. And so, so here's a good example. Um, Anna and I, after we record this, are going to go cycling. Okay, we love to we love to do that. It's something that that I've done for for many years, and it, that is that is my exercise, right? Um, now, I don't need I don't need a watch with data about how many calories I burned, right? To tell me that cycling is good. It makes me feel good. It is enjoyable. It is fresh air. It is sunshine. You know what I mean? It is all of these sorts of things. But so often, and particularly in business, I think that leaders hide behind what they perceive to be a lack of data or a lack of, you know, God has provided these figures and therefore the thing is good. And I, when I say hide behind it, I think that we, we often use this oftentimes when I hear someone say, well, what's the ROI of that app? Or what's the ROI of that, you know, as Chris says, what's the ROI of that spreadsheet, right? Mm -hmm. I often hear a, I don't want to have to make a strategic judgment. Yes. Be, so I therefore am going to invoke somehow a lack yeah. of data in order to defend my inaction in doing, in making a strategic judgment. I love it. So, you know, I don't think that we should, you know, I, I think that I said at the beginning, I think that this business value assessment and this ability for laymen, laypersons who don't specialize in this field to be able to measure ROI, that is 100% a good thing. But what I want, what I also think we need to be careful of is that we don't use this as yet another way to hide behind actually being leaders, right? And actually making strategic judgments. That's important. But there's different personality types and stuff as well, right? Because that example you gave of going for a walk and a run and stuff, if I do mm -hmm. something like that, and I realize I haven't got my Apple watch on or my aura ring, I'm like, I mean, like, I'm like, did it even count? Because I didn't oh, measure it. Like, it and and the it thing is, happen. but the thing is, I am a data driven person, and yeah. I see those results, and I'm like, I'm gonna do that again tomorrow. Like, it's a motivating thing for me. And I think what what and if I draw the parallel to this tool, is that I'm not talking about this tool up front in a project. I'm talking about if you have the platform as a strategic tool inside your organization. Yeah. And you're going to have programs of work that are going to run year after year after year. It is good that you've quantified the value that it brings because people higher up that are not day to day. They don't know the technology. They don't know the value. And they're making a decision between this and 500 other products. I think that drives value when you can quantify what your technology is producing for the organization as to, you know, Bob that doesn't have any idea the value his, you know, SAP platform or Pega platform is bringing. I also think that it's that what, what Chris was, was saying uh, earlier and uh, how hard it is to set this tool up and uh, how much thinking you have to do in advance, isn't that part of strategy? So the moment you're committing to using it, yep. you're like, okay, so now I'm going to have to do all this hard work. And if they cannot do it themselves, that's what we're 
consultants, right? That's that's exactly it. Yeah, and that that's what I was getting at. It's it's looking at an and you're right. Like I wouldn't, so I wouldn't go to a company and be like, yeah, have the benefit, have the business value toolkit. Mm. Buy. No, it's kind of like. Well, that's what that's what we did with the COE starter kit. Yes, we did. Yeah. We screwed Here, it up. have governance. This yeah. is governance. Here yeah. you go. It's it's we screwed it up, right? Like I think I think with this tool, and I love Anna what you said there because. If, so I, as I said, I've, I've, I go through this with customers all the time. Like I go through BVA type stuff. I go through what is ROI, mm-hmm. what is value, what mm-hmm. is qualitative, mm-hmm. what is quantitative, what does it mean to you? So I sit in these change management workshops driving these types of behaviors and we log them in Excel, right? So we're like, okay, let's put them in that Excel spreadsheet and we can track ROI against that. What I find interesting here is that, yes, it's a framework, but it's what I think is clever in the stool. It's the overlay. On all of it that he's got because he's got some very very clever maths and yeah. some ai that actually does some pretty impressive things on top of those numbers so once you've gone through the iceberg of mm-hmm. the, the bottom part of the iceberg of what is all the value nonsense and you get to that top layer i feel like this is where the value is in this tool yeah and i think that 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 the tool needs to be accompanied by like it needs to be paired also with an approach right yes. so um we talk all the time about anchor apps and one of the things that i see organizations doing with with power platform right is that if anything organizations are not ambitious enough with how they use power platform they make this big investment they maybe do some work around you know platform governance and getting the things set up and then what they do is they use power platform for trivial or little productivity toy type apps they don't build the anchor apps that are really necessary in order to move the needle on value, or they say, oh, we'll build the anchor apps later. And if you look at kind of the, the, the cost curve of a composable economic strategy, which I just, Mark, I don't know if you saw, I just covered this in a lesson I recorded for this course. It's coming out yeah. in a couple of weeks, but you know, anchor apps, building the anchor apps, swinging for the fences, so to speak, early on in the adoption is how you're going to drive a lot of that value and how you're going to bank a lot of that value so that you can then go build some of the, um, you know, more niche use cases or the more niche type scenarios. So I would say, take this tool and pair it with a strategy that front loads modernization or net new development of big anchor apps, and then measure the value, not of the thing for, you know, the, the, you know, the, the finance team that no one mm-hmm. else knows about, but use it to measure the value of the big anchor apps. That's why we call them anchor apps. They anchor your implementation of power platform across the ecosystem. That's the value you should measure. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So dude, if you think, so think about it like this, I have in, in any power platform states or AI state right now, I use the concepts of t-shirt sizing from a solutioning mm-hmm. perspective. So there are certain categories that a solution gets popped into, right? So if you take, like five categories, extra small all the way to extra large. Okay, pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. So extra small, smalls and mediums, like they have certain criteria. Number one, I don't actually care where you build extra smalls. Build them in default. I don't give a damn. I'm don't, yeah. I don't, IT don't support the, your default environment, so therefore I don't care. Correct. Okay, makers support their own tools. Um, I don't care about your analytics. Sort it, sort it out yourselves. Whereas mediums, actually that's getting onto the blurred line of this is where the process is different. So if you think about a journey that you draw for a maker, if you think about a, a line splitting out into three forks, okay, three prongs, the first prong is straight. It's like extra smalls and smalls in default. No one cares. Crack on and do your thing. But then you have this medium line at the top. And that's like actually you're building something a little bit more complex. You want to involve more team members, but you want to be doing BVA against this. You want to be saying, what is the return on investment of us spending time on this thing? So part of your maker journey is actually adding in that this piece of the process. So instead of a five-step process to productionizing something, it is now a 12-step process because you're going to go through a much more stringent set of rules. And that's where the stuff comes in. Yeah. So so shall we um, – I'm, I'm looking at the, at the clock. Mark, shall we uh, uh, – preview a little bit from the the conference that when this episode airs the conference will be next week should we yeah. uh should we finish off that way yeah yeah i think that'll be great as in we're all cool. excited we're going to be there right yeah. yeah all of us yes all of us all of us so andrew what what what, what are you thinking so the 
uh, I don't know how much we should give away, but I should say this. We've got, um, we've got one major, major, major piece of content or big thinking or, um, uh, something that, that folks can use, uh, in their daily work that's going to come out each day of the conference. Uh, so we've been, uh, we've got a new white paper scaling your enterprise cloud with power platform. We've been collaborating with, uh, with another organization on, uh, a white paper called ecosystem oriented architecture for the public sector. I love it. And then we have a bit of a surprise, but I'll say this, um, a, framework and a model to help organizations not just get started with their artificial intelligence journey, but to, um, uh, to also measure their maturity and to measure their progress and to really understand kind of where they are and target their investments in the most effective ways. So that is a, has been a mammoth project. Um, and we're really excited to, to release it. And then Mark, Mark's got one as well that he's been working on. Have I got one or three? Uh, it depends on how you want to slice it. I mean, yeah. uh, go for it. So we've, one of the things we've been doing on the Cloud Lighthouse is, is getting a bunch of our IP consumable. And and that is because in a lot of the events that have been presented at, people are like, yeah, but, you know, this seems to be, this workshop is part of a much broader way of thinking, et cetera. And so how do I get more? And so what we've done is set up a uh, learn.cloudlighthouse uh, that you can go to. And we're going to start drop. We'll, we plan to drop three courses next uh, for at the, uh, while the conference is on, and so you can go deeper into a lot of these thinkings. If you're in architectural role and you really need to go deeper, um, we've got three courses, which are just small ones to start with, but they're leading into some very um, deep thinking, precise thinking around ecosystems and around AI strategies, which are not product centric, but really much more broader in empowering you and the way you think about projects, solutions that you're going to implement, et cetera. Well, and I feel like we've been talking about, we've been talking about training for ecosystem architects for so long now <laughs> that we're finally doing it. We yeah. can, the, the, the first courses have been recorded, so they're on their way. Yeah. Hooray. So that we'll was so fun. Yeah. It was a self five. You can't see. Cool. Yeah. Self five. Yeah. Self five. Love it. Self yeah, five. five. I like it. Yeah. Highly, high respect, man. So yeah, looking forward to it. Love to get your feedback. If you're at the conference, come and see us. Come say hi. Come and uh, if you hit me up and say, "Hey, I heard your heard your uh, ecosystem show there, and you promised to buy me a drink. I will buy you a drink if you come up and tell me that." Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing you all. Is that an open invitation or just the first five? Just the first, no, it's an open invitation. Ten. It's an, it's an open invitation. It's an okay. open invitation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's wild. Oh, I tell you what, I did something, uh, just, just wrap with, I, I like <laughs> to right. buy motivation. Have you ever heard this concept of buying motivation? No, no, no. You mean like you go buy a new backpack? I mean, cause that's what I do when I want to get motivated. you're in your backpacks. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> It is a problem. So this is what I did. That one of these, there's a lady that I follow um, in the AI space. And, you know, there's so much around AI and there's so much snake oil and stuff out there. And everybody's got a new AI product, you know. And, and this lady um, is on the Forbes 30 under 30 or whatever. She's exited um, her first AI business um, already. And she's 29 years old. And she just gives away tons and tons of the way she's thinking about stuff. And so she dropped this video that said, you know, I've never been on social media, but a hundred days ago I joined social media. And she goes, I just a hundred days later had a hundred thousand followers from a standing wow. zero start. Right. And, she, and she, all she did was this was her model. Every day I'll post at least one video, but I'll try to do five videos a day. Hence why you're seeing me drop these videos, because I this is what I did. I'm like, man, this is a great idea. 100 videos in 100 days, but potentially 500 videos in 100 days, right? Five a day. And so I was like, damn, I'm going to do that. Like, I, it was just like an instant, like, I'm going to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, face the camera. It's a new way of doing stuff. I'm going to give that a crack. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh, let's buy some motivation. So I went to a face, uh, sorry, a WhatsApp group that I have w- a, of the alumni community that have been through the Niger Day Mentoring Challenge, right? And so over 1,200 people have been through the Niger Day Mentoring Challenge. So there's a, there's a few wow. people in there. And so I said, I will give 1,000 US dollars to anybody, the first person that points out the first day that I miss posting a video in the next 100 days. That's genius. See, that, that's, that's genius. buying motivation. <laughs> that's genius. I think that's really clever. And also expensive. Right? I don't want to give away a thousand US. So, man, am I, mo- I get up in the morning, I'm like, bang, what am I going to do today? What a- what's my video going to be on? Like- oh, my God. I find social media to be so overwhelming and so exhausting. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> but but the thing is, for me, it's, it's not the social media. It's, I'm getting a new skill, right, which is being able to make sure that you can communicate a concept in a very short amount of time and do it in a way that connects with the oh, other I'm person. Out. I'm out. And that's, <laughs> you know, it's not about being verbose, right? It's been about absolutely concise, terse, to the point. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a skill I want to develop, and I'm just... Whilst also not being Gen Z. I don't think that anyone is watching Mark's videos thinking, look at that Gen Z guy. Look at that Gen Z. No, no, what I I mean is that you you didn't necessarily learn this in school or you didn't have to do, you you weren't in the Snapchat generation where you had to like summarize a thing in 30 seconds or less. You're not doing TikTok every day and it's like super easy for you. It's hard, you know, these things are hard. It's a new muscle. Mm. I was just reading this article that, that was saying, um, that we should all look for for new jobs because jobs are changing all around us even if you aren't changing your jobs so that's yeah i thought that was a very very interesting concept so i guess it ties a little bit into into what you're saying it's just for you know building a new skill potentially I love a it. very would... expensive way of building a new skill but there we yeah are. yeah yeah only if, only if i don't deliver right oh. anyhow yeah. love you all see you next time See you. Later, dudes. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the Ecosystem Show. We hope you found today's discussion insightful and thought-provoking. And maybe you had a laugh or two. Remember, your feedback and challenges help us all grow. So don't hesitate to share your perspective. Stay connected with us for more innovative ideas and strategies to enhance your software estate. Until next time, keep pushing the boundaries and creating value. See you on the next episode.